Income tax 2021-2022 software example. Personal use of dwelling unit, including vacation home. Get ready to get refunds to the max. Diving into income tax 2021-2022. Lacert Tax Software, you don't need tax software to follow along, but you might want to have access to the forms and schedules, which you can find on the IRS website, irs.gov, irs.gov, starting point, single filer, Adam Smith, living in Beverly Hills, 90210. We got the W-2 wages at the 100000 We got the Schedule C income from the rental property flowing into Line 8 on the Form 1040 at the 51912. Let's take a look at that flow through, going to the Schedule E, the Supplemental Income and Laws. This is where our focus will be. We've got the rental property up top. And we've got the net then at income is our starting point at the 51,912. That's rolling into the form 1040 ultimately that we saw at line number eight. And we've got the standard deduction at the 12,550. That gives us the taxable income, the 139,362. Page two giving us the tax calculation currently at the 27,468. So let's go back to page one. Let's go then to the Schedule E, which is where our focus will be. We've got our rental property here up top. And now we've got this information, which shows us the fair rental days of 365. If we're renting for the entire year and uh, it's full rental property, then, you know, that's pretty straightforward. But now we're thinking about the allocation. If we had personal use, for example, and business use, like it's a vacation home or something, and we had some personal use of it and some business use where we have this allocation between the the uh, business use and personal use now again when we look at the income statement we don't have really a problem with the rents oftentimes or the income side of things because all the income came from the rental use we didn't pay ourselves but we do have this issue on the expense side of things for the allocation from rental and uh, the business. Let's take a look at an example. I won't get into the weeds too much in terms of what counts for a personal day and a rental day. You could dive into that in more detail. We wanna to get to the ratio here. So we've got a cottage that we rented out. You use the cottage for personal purposes for 14 days. The total usage of the cottage was 99 days. That was the 14 days personal use. And then you rented it 85 days. So that counts for a total of 99. That gives us our ratio of the 85 over the 99. So if we had a ratio calculation of something like that, and we had to use that for our, our calculations uh, for income, might look something like this. So we might say in a trusty Excel worksheet, say we rented it for uh, uh, days rented was the 85 days, personal use was the 14 days. So the total days would be the sum of the 99 days. So the allocation you would think would be then the 85 divided by the total. And then this would be the 14 over the total. And we'll make this whole column a percentage format. And if I sum that up, that would be the 100%. So we would then be allocating between uh, the personal use and and the business use using that 85. Now, so so if we did that, if we said, okay, my income, let's just make an income statement and say we had total income of the 100,000 and then we've got expenses which include possibly mortgage mortgage property tax and then other and, th and these two I want to break out specifically because those are the items that you might still have some deductibility on the personal side possibly so I'll see if I could spell it properly and so let's say let's say this was twenty thousand seven thousand five hundred and and you know forty thousand. We're also we might have depreciation, which is going to be another big one. And let's say that was let's say that was six thousand, or let's say it was ten ten thousand five hundred or something. I don't know. Then you got to you then you'd have to allocate it out between the rental and the personal. So if I say this is total total equals the sum of these and I'm going to put an underline here we'll do some indentation indenting here total expenses possibly indent here again and that's going to give us our net income income which is going to be equal to the 100 
minus the 78. Now, as we break it out, I'm not going to break out using a ratio on the income. I'm going to keep that 100,000 and zero because I didn't get any income from the personal side of things. Let's make this black and white so it shows as a header possibly more clearly. Black, white, I'll indent it. And so, but here's where the ratio comes into play. I'm going to take this times the rental use 86 in this case. I'm going to say F4, making that absolute and copying that down. And then this would be, you could calculate it as this minus this, or we're going to say it's, it's going to be this times the 14% F4. We could copy that down. And then we can kind of double check it with our total over here again. Total is going to be the sum of these two, just to recalculate it out. Give us a double check, getting us back up to the 20 there. And then we can subtract where sum equals the sum of these. Going to copy this one down and we'll copy this across, right? So you might have to do allocation uh, of something like that. And then of course, the rental side of things would be would be this column that we would we would be looking at. The personal side, we might still get to, to deduct these items possibly on the schedule A as you enter that into the system. So then if I was to go over to our to our return here, it might look something like this. I won't do the exact same numbers, but we'd have to say basically up top that we had the number of days that we said for rental was 85. And then on the personal use, we had the 14 days up top. So we had the 14. And so then if I go back on over, so now you can see up top, we've got the 85 and then uh, the 14. And then we've got basically our income statement that's that's allocated down below that we'd have to populate based on based on the, the proper calculation for the rental numbers. Also note when we apply out the depreciation, which is going to be calculated in the software typically, then we're going to have to make sure that we pick up that and apply out the proper amount of depreciation, possibly using kind of a ratio in order to do that, which we said was our uh, 0.86%, 0 0.86%, which helps us with our calculation in our worksheet down below for the the depreciation uh, the depreciation calculation that would then pull into the Schedule E. Once we've determined the proper amount of the Schedule E, once we figure out the proper allocation with regards to the Schedule E, then we might go to the Schedule A and see if we qualify for the Schedule A and looking particularly at then the, the mortgage interest up top as well as the property taxes, the property taxes that might be a deductible uh, component, uh, state and local personal property taxes might be a deductible component as well. So when we're doing our allocation, that's the, what we're going to think. We're going to think first, we're thinking about these items that are going to be applied to the rental type of activity, try to figure out, you know, what's going to be the rental basically income statement. And then we got to put that into, you know, the tax system for the Schedule E uh, and make sure the Schedule E is properly basically reflected. And then we could think about what other deductions we might have on the personal side that wasn't allocated to the Schedule E, possibly on Schedule A, for example, with the mortgage interest and the property taxes. Now, if you did this whole allocation process properly, and we look at the Schedule E, if it's not if the if it's not qualifying as a home, then we'd be, be subject to the losses. We got to be careful of the losses again. So, for example, if I went back on over to the Schedule E, and we said that uh, we had a loss, let's say, let's say we had a loss, bring in the advertising, let's say up to 100, 160,000, giving us a loss. So if I go back on up, now we've got a loss that's subject to the, to the rules we looked at before with regards to the losses, which would be the form 6198. And for most you know, individual taxpayers, most likely the passive losses would be the limitation form 8582, 
limited at this point to the 25,000 and that rolls over to the page one. So we got those calculations that we looked at in the past, which re with the key terms are, you know, passive activity rules. Are we, an, are we actively participating? Are we a real estate professional uh, to determine the amount of losses as well as basically our income thresholds that if it goes over a certain level, then the losses will be uh, reduced according to the income thresholds we looked at in the past. However, if it's a qualified home, uh, then we have further restrictions possibly. And here's the rules for the, the main home, dwelling unit used as a home. Uh, if you use a dwelling unit for both rental and pers per personal purposes, the tax treatment of the rental expenses you figure earlier under dividing expenses and rental income depends on whether you are considered to be using the dwelling unit as a home. So uh, you use a dwelling unit as a home during the tax year if you use it for personal purposes more than the greater of 1, 14 days, two, 10% of the total days it is rented to others at uh, a fair rental price. So now you've got this allocation between personal use and the business uh, or rental use. And then you've got this added kind of threshold that you got to be careful of with the uh, having qualify as the home, which could which could have different types of limitations in terms of the calculation uh, here on the rental expenses. So for example, if I went back on over, if I go down here, you could see that the losses in particular, in particular, this is going to kick in when we've got those losses that take place are limited to the 25,000 basically with the form 8582, uh, which is the, which is the, the losses for the, the passive activity rules. So if I go back on over and say, okay, let's go to the schedule E and let's bring this up to something that's going to make it over the threshold to make it uh, a home. So let's say it was like 60 days. So now I'm going to go back on over here and you can see the software is telling us uh, you've got the vacation home calculation and they basically uh, adjust the calculations here. We don't, we're not being limited by the same kind of passive activity rules. We've got other basically rules that would be our limitations, which I won't dive into now. But that's the other thing that you that you want to be careful of. You could take a look at the publication and look at the worksheet number five worksheet for figuring rental deductions for a dwelling unit used as a home and dive into there for more detail, if applicable, to help you with your calculations. I'm in publication 527 residential rental property tax year 2021. You could find on the IRS website, irs.gov, irs.gov.